facing a guy that uh, was a pretty good ball player at Belmont back in the day, Casey Alexander. Coach Alexander, what a winner. 119 and 25 as a player. Hall of Fame. Cut it to two, then you give up the three, and then you turn it right back over. 13th. Every possession important in this game. 13th turnover against the Moorhead State Eagles. Rose on a back door from Buckland. Reverse layup, it goes. Alabama 39 to 31 at this point. Coach Johnson's not going to be happy because yeah. he started a big lineup for a reason. And a nice back. Cut it now to a two-point game. And you're talking about the play of Whit Raff, uh, of Whit Raff the senior guard, uh, point guard. And I think this would, he probably wouldn't understand this, but the coaching staff for Lipscomb as they go inside. As he would like to defensively throughout the remainder of this game. Barbary, great feed to Cooper. That's something. Have to clap your hands. The ball's going to be there before you can even put the mailbox sign up. Lights out. Emory right now is just lights out from outside the arc. That's now their eight three pointer. They're shooting at a 57% clip from out there. They've hit eight. Lipscomb's hit four. Lipscomb uh, in the game because of the free throws they've connected on. There's a back door to Rose off the glass. Nice cut baseline. It's at halftime for Florida Gulf Coast. Just to continue to keep playing and play with do your, your style. Follow the scouting report, but of course, you're going to have to extend your defense a bit to be able to take away the three point shooting. But you have to say there's no way they can shoot the ball this well again in the second half. But when you get. You got out for a little bit of a break, and now Casey Alexander has it back on the floor. You got your best scorer out there who's had a hot hand in the second half. Less than 10 on the shot clock. Cooper, another cut and the finish by Pepper. Too long of a closeout there by Andrew Fleming and Rolling took advantage. That was his high school. Nine win seasons, but we still have been fractured and, and uh, people want unity. They want something they can believe in every day and and go to go to work to, to be in us to keep this more of a low scoring game in my opinion the flex offense there run by coach uh, skinner tried to work the ball down the middle but it was deflected and stolen away by lipscomb then they'll go inside the rock the philosophy is the first good shot is the one you take but the thing about them which is different they're not a big time ball screen team as we see Fleming, and here comes lipscomb on the run again Goes out top. Go inside to Marbury. As he's falling to the Hughes, who had 43 down in Kennesaw, has not scored yet in this ballgame. Here's Marbury. He's been the scoring machine. Leads. And as we said at the beginning, no leads big enough. It was 17 last week. Belmont is five for their last five in field goals that they cut into, but Lipscomb held on. And now Marbury has his shot blocked, but... At the most, or, or at the least, it's gonna go to 20 seconds. Uh, excuse me, it could go lower than 20, but it's gonna be usually at 20 seconds is where it's gonna reset. Well, they reset that one to 20. Also, where they inbound the ball has changed this year on fouls. As Buck Buckland on the wing. Marbury trying to get position again. That time the ball may have laced off the iron. Now Buckland for three. Blue guy. As Alabama fans get more and more film and get to watch him more, he does it all for this team. Marbury. Two of 11 from outside the arc for the Bruins. Lipscomb needs to get something inside the three-point line moving towards the basket here. He'll go to Marbury. He'll work it inside, lean it, spin it, shoot it. Tournament. And seeing your name on the bracket, that in itself is incredible exposure. We had almost 19 million people on ESPN.com fill out a bracket last year. Everybody is seeing that name, Lipscomb. Doesn't matter how long you hang in there. A little bit of a rush.
bust here early on in this ball game because being off due to exams. Of course, Lipscomb was off as well due to exams, but that little weak break can sometimes throw you off just a little bit. Matthews Scott and Masterson. That's a dynamic duo right there. Well, Scott's got 16, Masterson 23. They're leading the way for the Owls, and it's back down to a seven-point game for Kennesaw State, trailing the Bisons, trying to eat it in, and Mark. Jones will touch it into Pepper, who leans in and back to Jones. He thought about a three, doesn't, goes to Marbury down on the baseline. And let's kick it out to Joe, uh, to Rose, who goes to Buckland. Now Jones on the drive off the glass and good. Lipscomb fans on their feet waiting for their first bucket. So a tradition can continue in Allen Arena, but that three won't go for Buckland. For their defensively against him. Winner with a couple of free throws. He's got 10. He joins Mercer to lead the Bruins as they've cut it back to 14 now as Lipscomb will attack as we're going to be going under 10 minutes during this possession, most likely. Nice spin by Marbury, and then he kicks it to the corner. Just pulls up. I thought he had a size advantage there. He could have gone at Rose. Just put a jump shot over him. It wouldn't go, and Marbury had the rebound. A lot of ball movement by Lipscomb to set. Lipscomb's a motion offense, not a lot of set plays. So how can they get Matthews involved? Cooper, nice little set. Three to nine as the lead has been rebuilt to nine. In the corner, Matt in Kennesaw, Georgia, and so really they didn't need much else besides Garrison with those 43 points, but I think tonight, like I said, Marbury has been playing great here the last month of the season, and I'm not sure Kennesaw has a one player that can match one-on-one -on -one against him down low. Well, Dick Masterson who can shoot the ball from the out. That shot can be available at any point in the shot clock. Even though he's had the hot hand early, maybe that was a little heat check. Three-pointer off proper usage just to let people know we're not making anything up. Yeah, that, I'm sure that was the first time I said it. There was somebody at home watching saying, oh, wait a minute. That's not the way you say that. But that is actually the proper way to see it. And he came back back in the 2011-12 season to be the head coach. Got a 61-9, and 61-6 offensive boards a game. Yeah, he's really starting to define his role. He's doing a terrific job guarding one-on-one -on, -one on the block. He's a presence at the rim with their pressure defense. Matthews. Matthews, the air ball. Buckland launches a long. With Nick King, and of course, let's get Giddy with it, Giddy Potts. They are more than capable of making run. New Mexico State's defense, be careful of New Mexico State throughout the tournament. And then, of course, let's go. Gets to get it across the line with 4.15 to play. Matthews open for a second, but doesn't shoot the three. Buckland right back to Matthews in the corner. He'll spin and drive through the paint. That's a patented the losing streak for them. As there's another missed shot, and Lipscomb to the other end. And Belmont, a loss down to Tia, TCU, who's a very good team, top 25 caliber team. Now Matthews picked up by Johnson. Gilmore hounding Pepper. And these, we have to give this crowd a lot of credit, regardless as to what has happened here in the first half. They're still very involved. Smaller defender, but he also has the passing ability if the help comes. Buckland won't go. Coach Casey Alexander up shouting the instructions in the play. He wants to see his team run. And they'll go to Pepper. Got it in Alabama uniform, off the mark. Lips come back the other way. Pepper off the front of the rim. Kind of almost a little backing up on the three, and that's why it ended up being a little short. Pepper makes the catch, but down on bound for Lipscomb. Well, and I think that's what you got to do with Masterson. You, you obviously can't foul. Marbury wide pass. open again. 1,000 points, averaged 27 points per game at Howard. He's just the second ever grad transfer they've had here in Knoxville. Buckland takes a three. Whistle. He's up to 10 points now in double figures. 
Making a big basket there for the Owls. Nothing wrong with the defense from Buckland. That's just nice one-on-one -on -one play. Rose, shot block, gets his own rebound. Position, but that, that was a little bit of a point of emphasis of the officials of the offseason was offensive contact down in the post. They'll make a change as they go in. His first basket, Gibbons, of course, fans here getting their first look at him at home. A transfer from Ohio State had to sit out last year due to transferring. But another big body inside for the Crimson Tide. We'll see Dazon Ingram getting the assignment of Lipscomb's best scorer, Matthews. For the Eagles. Matthews on another three. Butlin for Lipscomb. Rose for three. Five point Lipscomb lead. Really good job using the rim as a screen there to protect his shot. Oh, Matthews, what a spinning move. There's a three-point game here in Allen Arena with two minutes to play. Marbury way out from the bucket. They'll go to Fleming with it. Back to Marbury, two-headed flush. Great. Walk on at Texas A&M, and I thought that was what he would be, a walk-on. And he has come here and contributed in so many ways. Can't forget his heroics in the four-overtime game against South Carolina last year. And he was much more than just the coach's son. Here's Fleming to the basket. Kentucky gets that three-pointer, and it's a one-point game. Lipscomb by only one with 14.35 to play here in the game. Fleming looking inside. Instead, will drop. In 31 minutes of playing time, he leads all scores with 25. Well, in the win against Florida Gulf Coast, both he and Scott put up 27 apiece as Garrett Franklin anticipated the behind the pack of Garrison Matthews. Matthews, although trying to be a little more active here early, did not have a good game against ACU the first go around. As I mentioned, just eight points for him. Inside Marbury, who did have a good from outside the three point line. You're talking about the second best three point shooter percentage wise in the country, averaging 52% and half. And they've cut it now to seven, and they've done it defensively. They've been able to get some turnovers and then move those into points. Matthews forces another shot in this ball game. And you know, you think about a lot of folks between Abilene and Lipscomb as Matthews short the shot as the rebound, and Lipscomb attacks with a two-point lead in the ball. As they'll go to Fleming on the wing, and he'll go toward the free throw line, spin with it, and they'll set it up outside this man-to-man. -man. Skips it all the way over to Buckland into the corner from Matthews three. That starts with the basketball first. Lipscomb last year, 20 wins. They went 20 and 13. Coming off a win against Moorhead State before coming here to Tuscaloosa. Top of the key. Buyama, but it's deflected, and Lipscomb gets another steal. Now Cooper will drive. He's got five. Lipscomb pushing again. Cooper all the way. 4-2. Something's uh, messed up with our scoreboard here as well. It has. It's gone to a 54-44 game, which isn't right. Buyamba down low, tries to go there to Masterson, but there to jump to the passing lane and makes the steals. Matthews, he'll give it off to Marbury. Buyamba, hard fall there. Boy, he hit the floor hard, and Marbury at the other end gets another dunk. Cooper, the lob, Marbury down low, kicks it back out. Matt Rose lines up a three. Flex gives it for a two-point attempt that's off the side of the iron. No good there by Lockley. And quickly to the other end, Marbury that's played by all players. Yeah, Masterson, it's really been him and Marbury tonight. That's been the storyline as Marbury again. <laughs> Sixth best in the country. Lipscomb averaged over 10 threes a game a year ago. That three-pointer allowed them to take the lead back to back by Buck. As there's a nice three put up by Masterson. Part of the problem is not necessarily what Kennesaw State is doing, is what a play. <laughs> Rose, nice look underneath. That one goes from Rose. You talk about 
uh, perfecting a craft, he has pretty much perfected the three-point line. A counter by Matthews won. Some of the big schools on the road. That's where Lipscomb will head next on Tuesday when they play Alabama. Rose with the shot. Connect the three-point line. So if you catch them in a night when they're not shooting it well, you got a good chance against them. And that time, Masterson with a nice little two bring Kennesaw State to within one. Matthews to Buckland. He looked to go to Marbury, couldn't, so he'll skip it over to Cooper, who's going to drive, goes between a couple of... Well, and both Scott and Masterson have not taken a break yet in this game. They've played all 15 minutes. Cooper. I think Coach Zimmerman might say is, hey, we need you to score a little bit more. You're a good scorer. I think sometimes players like that, sometimes they're so good at distributing the basketball, they forget that they can... 73-73 ball game. Buckland over to Fleming. He'll shoot the three. In and out, no good. Tip point lead, but does it as Lipscomb gets the rebound. Well, now under 40% from the free throw line is Emory. Fleming missed on the drive. An upset bid by Coastal Carolina. We're game number two. UAB and Auburn will follow us. Buckland in the air had to change. Travels in a few minutes on the bench, comes back in and nails a three to make up for it, and he brings Emory back to within one. Emory now nine for their last 11 on the offensive end. They're now six of 11 from outside the arc. And Matt is that time to set Scott up for that two-pointer. Matthews finds a gap. It's going to drive too hard off the...